Abraham's story on MTV's Teen Mom was about what happens in the aftermath of teen pregnancy. But her latest foray into camera stardom is a depiction in graphic detail about just what she did to get pregnant in the first place. According to several reports, the pornographic film Abraham shot with porn star James Dean has outsold even the gold standard of celebrity sex tapes distributed by adult film company Vivid Entertainment just 12 hours after its debut on Monday night. The 70-minute film has already been watched by 2 million viewers. That way outdoes the Kim Kardashian tape that only got 600,000 views in the same amount of time. So, I do... I, okay. Sex shaming. Nope. Not trying to do that. On the other hand, I feel like this, um, the, the teen mom piece is complicated. Mm -hmm. And the idea that she has learned from our reality TV culture that, that exploiting her own body mm -hmm. is what will get her fame and fortune, I, it, that seems like a problem. That is a huge problem. Yeah. This is an area that I have a lot of problem with. Mm -hmm. Now, what Farrah decides to do with her body and with her choices is her choice but I'm concerned about where we as a culture that the only TV that we find entertaining is one that exploits young women and young girls mm -hmm. around teen pregnancy teen moms and tell that person that is okay the way to get ahead is to now take that and go out and exploit your body yep. if that is the only TV that we as a culture will accept mm -hmm. shame on us shame on us shame Shame on us. Right, on us, right? On not us. right on us. Not on fire on, on us. us. Right. And and you know, I've I've got the, the Twilight um, poster in the back because this is one of the ones that makes me nervous. Like I feel like we see the you know teenager engage in pornography and that's the clear red flag. Mm -hmm. But you know, also the romantic story of stalking and being bitten and the kind of restrained violence that's part of that whole narrative, it feels to me like you know, sexual desire is endogenous and we generate this idea that what is desirable is this kind of power relationship between the man and the woman. No? Yes? Yes. <laughs> so what I'm sitting here thinking is that this is actually why we need to be talking to young people about mm -hmm. sex. Mm -hmm. So I, I get it all the time. If you talk to kids about sex, it'll make them curious. Are you kidding? They watch TV. They have sex. Well, they have hormones. They're they curious. Have, well, of yeah. course they're curious. They're naturally curious, but they're also they're reading Twilight. They're seeing these things on the internet. And they have to be taught how to interpret these sexual messages mm -hmm. and how to see. It's media literacy 101. Mm -hmm. How to see something like Twilight and go, wow, that is stalking rather than, wow, that is sex. Sexy, right. But if we're not talking to young people about what real sex is and what real sex looks like, then we have the problem of them thinking that sex looks like porn. See, I, see, I, so I appreciate this, that you took it to the point of media literacy and critical viewership and reading. It's not keep your child from reading Twilight. It's read Twilight along with your child, right, and, and have that critique, right? Enter into that conversation. The other sort of moral panic going on these days is the twerking phenomenon, right? So there were these teenagers in San Diego who made a twerking video and were were expelled. So there they are twerking. I mean, it's, you know, one might be impressed by, you know, but so, so I wonder, like, on the one hand, it's just sort of teenagers doing lewd dancing, but it clearly develops this moral panic in so many people, including the school administrators. Yeah, so I don't really know what to say about the, you know, 33 girls getting suspended, but I would hope that others... Oh, sorry. Others, they were suspended, right, also, not yeah, expelled. Yeah. I would hope schools took such swift action against harassment in bullying as opposed to dancing. <sighs> That's, yeah. yeah, that's a good, right, so the idea that, that these students are suspended for a representation of sexuality that we're uncomfortable with, but there may in fact be kids not suspended for behaviors that are yeah, in fact far exactly, more exactly. aggressive and, and possibly damaging. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of representation of sexuality that they did on their own. I mean, have you ever mm -hmm. seen a high school dance team? They do some of the same moves, mm -hmm. and that is something that is being taught in a class. I also really have to wonder if any of those students were boys, or if they were all boys, and they were engaging in a video they did on their own that was something sexual, they probably would have laughed it off. I do not think that they would have been suspended. There is something so gendered about fearing young women's sexuality mm -hmm. because young women's sexuality, if we can't control it, then we fear it and we try to control it even more and that never works. Dr. Gilliam, you have some tools, some resources, ways of thinking about doing this better. 
So we've added a new dimension to our work, which is around game design. And we use both storytelling and narrative, as well as game design and digital media. And what's special about this work for us is that we hear from young people and we tell their stories. One of the things about being afraid of young people's sexuality is that we kind of put our fingers in our ears and we don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. When you ask young people to tell the stories that are affecting their lives and you give them the tools to tell those stories, then it really opens up this whole world that I think most adults do not have the tools mm -hmm. and the ability to communicate on it with young people. And then we use those tools as a way of communicating with other young people. So we're really excited. We're about to launch a game uh, that has to do with sexual assault and dating violence. Mm -hmm. And I think it gets to this core piece that we're really missing from this conversation, giving young people tools for relationships, whether those are relationships with one another, relationships mm -hmm. with adults. Those are very complex, and we're much more, we're much more quick to say sex is bad rather yep. than relationships are beautiful and right. you have to work at them. Right. The goal is not is not to shame sexuality out of existence, but instead to create healthy empowerment. Thank you to 